And welcome, folks, to another edition of the Michigan Football Breakdown, focused on the defense with Vance Beffert. He is back, ready to go, ready to break things down, ready to evaluate this defense in a way that only he can. And one of the things he said to me, he said, are we going to evaluate Michigan against the team they play? And then we're going to evaluate Michigan against the teams they're going to play. That is the unique thing about Vance is he's breaking things down. He said, okay, this is how it looks here. Now, how does it translate? Do I got to have it right, Vance? Hey, you have it right on point. I mean, <laughs> you have to also take care of the day, but I'm also looking. When you have Michigan, it's not just about the team playing right now. It's always about the last game of the year or the next best team in this conference. And if you do that, now you can talk about winning championships. But you always take care of what's in front of you first, but you're always planning for what's down the line. All right, Vance. He said, man, I can count to three, Vance. That's what Nuber said. Are we talking now, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Tyler enough, you said, Vance, we're on the train. <laughs> hey, get out the way, baby. <laughs> yeah, you got your people lined up for you, Vance, to reflect upon this 52 to 10 drubbing. Now, a testament to your great teaching skills. I mean, it's a lot of coaches that, I mean, you figure most coaches know some ball, right? They know some exes, but how can how many coaches can really articulate it? Now it's one thing to articulate it to players, it's another thing to articulate it to lay people. And so Vance, I'm sitting up there watching the uh watching Will Johnson pick that ball off. And I remember that's the coverage that old Vance Bedford talked about. I said, Man, Vance, did I pass the test? And Vance, he executed it it very, very well, obviously. A guy that we talked about, you said, hey, he needs to knock some of the rust off. And then the call that the coaches made put him in great position to make a great play. He did. He did. It's, it was great to see Will take that next step. And when I saw a guy playing with great fundamentals and playing with great smarts, I mean, so they come up in a formation, which I told you, they shouldn't have been in that formation. That's the first thing. And so they are in what we call six guys, a quarter, quarter, three, we call it palms. And they read number two. So you can see Will shuffling out, eyes on number two. The safety's deeper. As soon as two broke outside, and Will took off like a lock, like a rocket. Played it perfectly. The safety was over the top, intercepting touchdown. You can't start a game any better than that for the home opponent. But I step back, I'm watching the game. I'm like, is that quarterback really that smart to throw it to that guy that way? Is the quarterback coach really that smart? To tell a guy, do you not see the safety deep in the corner up a little bit closer? That they're probably in some form of cover too. Why would you throw that ball? You know why you threw that ball, Sam? Because his coach hadn't taught him any better. That's called lack of coaching. I love doing this show. You know why? I don't have to be politically correct. When I was the coach, I couldn't say certain things. Nah, well, it's like free at last, free at last, baby. Let it rock and roll. <laughs> Yeah, no Christmas cards coming from Minnesota. I already told you, Vance. No Christmas cards coming from Minneapolis. The Gophers are not going like Vance after this film study, that's for sure. So, no, nah, but the, you saw you saw Will look like – that's the kind of play he made in Big Ten Championship game. It, it is. I, I think he's starting to move in that direction right now. I don't think he's there. But what I saw in this particular ball game, I'm excited. It looks like he's taking that step to be on his way back to the things we thought he would be doing this entire season. So if there was, I mean, they had a couple successful plays. They had the one right before the half that obviously we're going to go over in the film study because that's what, that's what we do. We talk about the good and the bad, right? But the more, more con, not concerning, but the, to me, the thing that stuck out to me more than the, the touchdown play, uh, because, I mean, they threw it, they got one. But they were running that stretch play in the first quarter pretty good. It wasn't just one stretch. It wasn't just two stretch. It wasn't just three stretch. I mean, they ran, seemed like four or five stretch plays in there. And they had some success in the, in the first quarter doing that. So what did you see as to why they were having success with the stretch play, Vance? And then what did Michigan do to kind of clamp down on it? First thing I saw was formation. They were giving us formation to the boundary. Motioning back or with formation to the field, motioning to the boundary. Then most people run a split zone. It's nothing but a duo with a tight end coming back across. 
these guys are running stretch off of motion. So a couple of times we're in cover one. And we should have been in great shape, but the linebacker kept chasing the tight end going back across, which made us shorten the box. We were playing a two technique. A two technique is head up, but it still means you have a gap responsibility. Our two technique was getting blocked by the tackle. That means that the guard was not climbing up on the backer. We had nobody there. I could have, I could have fell for two yards. And so we ran, it looked like over three, over one. We trying to run quarters. We had some confusion in secondary in the second half, in the second quarter, rather, we just started blitzing. Then the guys go play, and we just took that play away, and they quit, they quit running that play all the guys. But in the first half, we were trying to play base defense, and they had us running from sideline to sideline. We're getting overreached, and the backside was getting cut off, and the linebacker's fit wasn't right. Therefore, they had a huge hole in the A and B gap, and they're getting almost 12 yards a pop. No, it, felt, it felt like that was one. Would you say that was more on the adjustments from, from coaches as opposed to players, or was it equal part? You, you always want to figure out where where does the fix lie for something like that. Is it, you know, guys need to read their keys better on the field and, and basically align better on the field, or is it was it on the call? Because, like, they eventually they start making some calls that nullified it. I think it's a combination of all of it, Sam. I mean, when you talk about the keys, you know, I, was, I was looking at the backside linebacker. Okay, he was away from passing strength. Every time the tight end came back across to block the edge, in most rules, he's thinking if possible boots, so I'm going I gotta hang backside. If it's man to man, that tight end was his. If they were in quarters and he was a quarter flat guy, he had to be back there. When he did that, that means that the front side back to the field next to the nickelback, he should have played heavy in the box. If you go to the video study, we call him a, a stack player. So therefore he could have fallen back in the A gap. But he never did. He kept pressing the B gap, so therefore he got kicked outside. The two technique got cut off. The backside back was going back outside for contain. There was nobody in the A B gap. So when they finally stopped the play, they started blitzing. So it's a combination of they attacked our scheme real white well. And so the best thing you could do, if you go man to man, probably stop that play. Tight end move, I got a guy man to man on him, so the back will stay where they are. Now you got enough guys in the box. They never had enough guys in the box in base defense to stop that play. Okay. Now, talk me through the touchdown right before the half, 13 seconds left. What did you see there, Vance Bethel? Well, I, I know you're not talking. Harbaugh said he took, took responsibility for that play. Uh, Harbaugh, it's great to see you following the sword. Bullshit. Yeah, to you, that wasn't your responsibility. I'm not buying that. You better tell us somebody at that. It's like me going to a used car salesman. He gonna sell me a jalopy. Say I got a 440 under the hood, and ain't, and, 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 and ain't no engine in there. So at the end of the day, I know for a fact that the University of Michigan work on too many drills. They talk, work on situations. Oh, it's a minute and 30 one timeout left. It's a minute two timeouts left. It's 45 seconds no timeouts left. What's going to happen? That situation was 13 seconds, no timeouts. 13 seconds, no timeout. Keep the ball inside in front. They throw a hitch, tackle. They throw a curl, tackle. I'm not going to get beat on a, 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 a double move. They motion, you won't believe this, Sam, formation to the boundary. That means they had three receivers in the boundary and one to the field. Why would my safety to the field, because they motion to the boundary, slide over there, with 13 seconds. It's called common ass sense. Hang your ass to the field and double at one receiver. That ain't, it's not going to happen. It's not practice. It's 13 seconds. Really? That's why I don't come. That's why I just got a brand new hair. I'll be bald headed all stressed out. About to coach that. It sounds like you're coaching right now, Vans. I feel like I'm in the meeting room right now, Coach. Oh, well, I was in the meeting room. They know I'm off the wall. They're going to say, Coach, you didn't take the medication today. No, I did take my medication today. They're going to say, Coach, we won 52 to 10, Coach. We won 52 to 10. No, that play, it should have been 52 to 3. That's what it should have been. That, that touchdown should never happen. Now, the only good thing about that play, it's a teaching moment. See, life is about moments. I mean, everything in time just goes on. But in life and anything you do, there are always certain moments that catch your attention and make you think, 
this is one of those moments. I could promise you this would never happen to little Mike again. Because Mike, you know, he's one of my favorite players. I love little Mike. And he got to me, he has intangibles. When I say intangibles, instincts, common sense. On that play, he didn't show that, which is why I'm so upset about that particular play because who it was. Somebody else, I'm like, well, you know what? I can believe he did that. But not little Mike. 13 seconds. Somebody told me we got 13 seconds inside and in front. Don't give them a cheat. They got to either double move. They throw it inside. We tap them. Clock went out. They got no timeout. That's why I'm frustrated about that play because it's through what happened against. So I have so much respect for Lamar. All right. So teach tape, teach tape, right? Teach, I mean, you get it out of the way versus Minnesota. Now you get down the line against your, your Penn States and your Ohio States of the world. That's that's behind you, right, Coach? Well, you know what I'm, what I'm saying? Cause I'm going to go back to Bowling Green. Bowling Green got behind us for the double move. So the corners coach, you know, he's going to be working on the fundamental – on what is the breaking point on the body of a receiver based off a double move. If it's a slant, I always tell guys, if you isolate it by yourself, you drive the shoulder. If I have help, I go in front of the interception, so I'm protecting from the double move. If he's running the hits, I go to the hip, knowing which way he's going to turn, so I can collision the guy. So those are some things you can work on as far as real work to take those things away. Alignment of the safety. Based on situation, what should I align, what should I do? Because you need coaches on the football field. Robots on the football field, they can do exactly what you say, but they can't think. That's what they call robots. So they do anything a little bit different, they can't make adjustments. Those kind of guys that you beat on game day in big plays. So you want a lot of coaches on the field. And I think we have that in secondary right now at Michigan. we got some really intelligent kids that should be like coaches on the football field that can make adjustments for us. Yeah, so you, you talked about the safety on the touchdown surrender. That was uh, young Keon Sav. He came back, and Adam Adam Shepherdson talked about it. He said, we'll look better for sure. But what about Sav for six as well? He came back and got a big pick six too, the young fella. He did. That was a nice play. I mean, it's he, he read his guy blocks. He sat there and read the quarterback's eyes, picked one off, got in the end zone. And, again, I, I know I've been hard on the secondary this year because I'm a secondary coach. We've had a lot of injuries from – you know, pre, from uh, start of the season, guys just getting back. Each week we've improved. We've taken steps forward, getting us ready for crucial games and crucial times. We've had a great pass rush. So sometimes things that I see or bring out is not happening to hurt us because we're getting pressure or sacks in the quarterback. The issue will come up when we don't have that. Can we clean the little details up so, therefore, now we make those plays. We don't get in bad positions where the line got to get us out of trouble. We got to take care of it ourselves. And last year, overall, I didn't see as many of those things pop up as I have seen so far this year. But we playing younger guys, newer guys, and that inexperience early on is showing off. But we're getting better and better and better. We're taking steps in the right direction. That's why we scored two touchdowns on defense this particular week. Yeah, man, listen, you know, one thing is very, very clear that, you know, you you watch these games and mistakes are a part of the game. Who can make the fewest mistakes? All right, and Michigan is a team that, compared to the other squad, doesn't beat itself a lot. Of course, you're going you're gonna to miss some calls. You're going to make some mistakes on the football field, but they don't get a whole lot of penalties. They don't blow a whole lot of assignments like you see some other teams, Vance, and we'll, we'll get to this when we get into questions. This has got to come up. I'm watching on a weekly basis examples of coaching malpractice like you wouldn't believe. You you called it out the, the Minnesota staff for some of the calls they made, but they didn't do anything half, a quarter, a hundredth of as bad as what I saw happen in, in Miami last week. All I can say about that play is that he didn't have a assistant head coach an offensive coordinator on that staff, they can tell them, because we're going to take a knee. You want to fire me. <laughs> we're taking a knee. That play was arrogance. I don't do it my way because I'm big, physical, and tough. Arrogance gets you beat. And that's what happened to him. That's not the first time it's happened to him, from my understanding. It happened no, to him in Oregon. Yeah. So apparently he hasn't learned his lesson about what it takes to win. It's not about you. The game's over with. Take a knee and let's go home with a victory. Instead, you got your kids on the sideline crying. That's how you lose your team. 
you can lose your team away. I, I, I saw some other things. So everybody know I'm a Texas expert. I'm going to grab them. They got a first and goal on the two-yard line. They've been talking about how big their offensive line is. Sam, first and goal on the two? You got the biggest offensive line in the country? And you can't move a snail off the line of scrimmage to get in the end zone? Man, I'm going to tell you about how fat guys are. <laughs> don't get me started. And I got to go to Austin tomorrow, too. I, I know I make people mad, but I don't care. <laughs> Hey, you man. on the two-yard line, knock them off the ball. You tell me, oh, we big. So? <laughs> you look big on first and go on the two and then get in and four down. Man, don't, don't talk to me. We didn't uh, play that bad hey, game. Hey, man, hey, Van, Van Sark not going to let you in the football building, man. Man, I don't care. <laughs> Dude, I was there before he was. Hey, 1980 in the first quarter on ABC on Labor, on Labor Day, I left a knee out there. I tore my knee off. I still remember the play. One of the first night games. In that statement, back in 1980, so I, I don't need for Sauce to let me in anything. <laughs> he, he, his name not on nothing, neither's mine. <clears throat> I don't walk around there like I own something because I left a piece of Vance there. <laughs> I don't know what got Vance fired up today, but Vance is fired up today. All right, let's. Uh, and folks, if you have questions for Vance, put them in the comment section. We'll get the questions at the end. But we got to shout out a guy who you've been talking about since he got here. He was a starter in the base package as a freshman. You know how hard it is for a lineman to come in and start as a freshman? An offensive lineman is more so than defensive lineman. But, but still, for a defensive lineman to come in and start as a freshman, Mason Graham, number 55, with a club on his hand, Vance, Went out, led the team in tackles, got a sack, was in the backfield, wreaking havoc seemed like from the beginning of the night to the end. I thought he had two sacks. Man, they, they took one of his sacks away. I mean, I, I thought he was bam, bam from the Flintstones, but he was whipping them guys left and right. But what he does, he plays with great technique. He plays with great leverage, and that's from wrestling. He understands that, how to get underneath the guy, how to move his feet, his hand placement, and he's quick as a, as a hiccup. I mean, he, he got something about him right now. And he shows leadership out there. He plays hard every single snap. And that's why he's a great player. He, put, he lays it all on the ground. I love to watch him play. And he brought some excitement to that defensive line this week, which we so desperately, in my opinion, needed. He did a great job. I like Mason. Yeah, you can feel him. That's the, that's the thing that I came out of that game saying, you can feel Mason Graham out here tonight, which is saying something because the, defense, the defensive line was making plays in his absence, and man, he came out there and and looked like he was on another level entirely, which is saying a whole hell of a lot. All right, let's start getting to some of the questions, Vance, as uh, folks have been lining them up and uh, getting them out here for you. So let's go. <laughs> it's a funny was in here too, Vance. Uh -oh. It's a funny was in here. All right, so uh, here is one. Let's go to the first one. Uh, I think it's Melchizedek, Israel, said, jumped in here early for Sam Advance. I got uh, some questions for y'all. What's the reason why Mar Marion Walker isn't playing? I'll get to that. Vance, what do you think is the defensive ceiling for this uh, defense this year? What's the ceiling for the defense this year? I think we're going to finish in the top five. That gives us a chance to be the conference champion and go to the playoffs. And now if we get to the playoffs, now it's time for J.J. to take the offense to the next level along with special team. We have a defense that gives us a chance to be Big Ten champions three years in a row and get to the playoffs for the third year in a row and get us past that for that first game. And then it's up to J.J. to take us over the hump. That's the one thing that I think, not, not last year, you were full last, we were missing that part. We were missing that part. Some of the mistakes we made last year versus TCU, I think we learned some things from that, that we have cleaned those things up, some of the defensive calls we had. This, this is our year because, in my opinion, I've seen Georgia play. I've seen USC play. Texas got their butts kicked the other day. Okay, I've seen Florida State. Which team has a total team right now? Michigan might have a total team. Offense, defense, special team. Georgia's still trying to find themselves because the quarterback is not the same quarterback. USC got a great quarterback for their defense. They're going to give up 40 points. And they give up 40 points to Michigan. They're not, they not beat Michigan. Okay. 
Florida State, I hadn't seen enough of them, but they like they might be a whole team. So right now, we're in the thick of things. All we need to do is take care of business. So far, we hadn't beaten ourselves. We don't have a lot of flags. We don't turn the ball over. Uh, we're getting turnovers right now. So we have a total team. So the ceiling for us, man, it's off the charts right now. And Amarion has been uh, playing. He uh, he got back in. He got back on the field uh, starting with the Nebraska game. Uh, so getting more, getting some more snaps. And I think, I think it's reasonable to expect for him to start to get more snaps. I think as you look at the secondary, I think that's one of the things that that they want to do. Some of the young guys, DJ Waller, for instance is a guy that I know they really like and are excited about. I think you'll see some of those guys that have been getting snaps later in games maybe start to get more snaps early in games. And Marion for sure, because uh, that's a guy who they had a lot of high hopes for, injury, set him back. But now that he's well enough to be on the football field and now that he's gotten his feet wet a little bit, I definitely think he he's one that you'll see uh, getting some more snaps earlier in the game as we get – here over the next couple of weeks. All right, getting on. Uh, Vance, let's get to the next one. And uh, you already answered the question about the deep ball right before the half. Um, there there was a question about, was there anything similar to, because you, you were really on DJ last year, about the no. free releases. Was there anything similar no, on that play? That's totally different play. A lot of times, last year DJ was oppressing. He let guys go on top of him. We were playing off in that particular situation, 13 seconds. It was a little hitch and go, and Mike kind of sat on it and let the guy go on top of it. I mean, so totally different situations, totally different play. One was a press technique, one was an off technique. And it's just a technique that we got to get cleaned up for little Mike. I think you won't see that play again this year. All right. Uh, Deadly Ninja B said, Vance, have you ever made a decision as dumb as Crystal Ball in Miami not taking a knee? He went to the front of the class with that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> he went to the front of the class. I, I, I've done some things that weren't the brightest things at, at times. But that right there, man, I didn't see the play. But when I heard about it, I'm like, you have to be – if they just take need a clock on or not, why would you want to play? But, again, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. He didn't have an assistant head coach or offensive coordinator that had the, the balls to sit up coach. We're going to take a knee. We want to fire me. But he ain't nobody could do that. And because of that, it cost him the game. Because if, if he is that, his personality is that strong and he doesn't listen to anybody on his coaching staff, he is going to eventually fail at the University of Miami. Because no head coach can do it alone. I work for Urban Meyer. And Urban Meyer would listen to his coaches. I mean, as tough as he was, he listened to his coaches. Er, uh, work for er, Earl Bruce. As hard as Earl Bruce was on us as coaches, Earl Bruce would listen to his coaches. And I'm looking at that play, it appears Mario don't listen to anybody but himself. And so, therefore, he has the wrong staff around him. So he got a bunch of yes, sir, man. You, you used to, you used to uh, say, hey, Lloyd, we need, hey, Lloyd, we need to take a knee. Oh, uh, Lloyd never did that, though. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, they asked me what I thought. They got my opinion. They, go, go ask anybody who worked with me in Michigan. I said, Vance always had something to say. Yes, he did. Because yeah, you know what? It's like Earl Bruce used to tell me when I worked for him at Colorado State, when I played a guy. Man, you really don't like your wife. What do you mean, coach? Because every time you play them, you put them for sale sign in front of a house. <laughs> so I learned a long time ago. I wasn't putting for sale sign in front of my wife's house. I'm putting guys out there give me the best chance to win. I'm gonna make my suggestions to you on what will work. And if you don't listen to me, you're gonna keep on hearing from me. Then that next week during the week, you're gonna hear from me a whole hell of a lot <laughs> on how I feel about it. It's all good. I wouldn't matter nobody. I love my job and the kids. I wanted my players to have success. So it's up to me to stand up for my players. Gotcha. All right. Brian, Brian, uh, this is Brian Block. He was talking about the stretch play. He said, you know, I know a team down south that likes to run the stretch play a little bit. So that's that's why I think you know, hammering that play, because I think you showed what did you get into? Like four stretch four, plays in the field. Four straight stuff? plays of it, yes. Yeah. Well, what I didn't see early on from, from the defense is it's what we've been doing for the first two ball games. We've been doing a bunch of moves, whether it be rock, whether it be lightning, whether it's pushing a backer. We got in that ball game and we ran over three, over one, over six, over quarters, just playing base defense. And the stretch play, we got reached and we got cut off 
and it caused big gaps inside. So I don't think you'll see that versus Ohio State where we played against these guys. I think we went to this ball game and just to say we just need to teach our guys to play base fundamentals, and that play hurt us. We eventually made adjustments and took it away. So don't expect to see that versus Ohio State. They were going to run the stretch. They're probably going to see the sand coming off the edge. That's going to kill that play. A lightning come off the edge. That's going to kill that play. Uh, a corner blitz from the boundary. That's going to kill that play. Or pushing the line back inside. That's going to kill that play. So they're going to have things to take that play over early. You won't see the base defense we saw versus Minnesota. All right. Adam Shepherdson has been paying attention. So he kind of picks up on something you've been talking about, motion. He said, Vance, can you explain how the motions affected Michigan's rush defense versus Minnesota. And when teams motion that much, would you change coverage and rush D assignments to a base D or stay with the defensive calls and communicate? How, how would you adjust? Basically, how would you adjust to all that, that motion that you saw, especially motion to the boundary, which you've been talking about a lot? Well, you know, you, you have adjustments, but once I have a call on, that call is on. I'm not, it's, it's a long time ago when I was coaching, I used to go to different meetings, okay? Uh, I would go sit in and listen to offensive coaches. Call. I wouldn't go to the defensive side. I went to the offensive side because defensive coaches, and Jesse does this, he attacks most of the time. So you want to be aggressive. People sit back and play base because of motion or FSL. In big games, they're going to lose. You want to force people not to do those type of things for what you're doing defensively. We play a lot of base defense, which we haven't done the whole year. We've been angling, slanting, bringing guys in there, and we adjust on the fly. So my number one thing, you got a defense call, you just adjust on the fly. But once they came off the sideline, you explain to your guys, this formation here, we're getting this. Don't go tell them back to that line back. That tight end come across. Don't worry about him. Go hit the A-gap right now. Run through and get a tackle for loss. That's all you had to do. They would have quit running that play. He kept coming back to the tight end because based off of coverage, he could have been a flat defender, so he had to come back on. If it was just cover one and, and the safety had the guy, he could have pressed the A gap again. So number one thing we should do to plan C formation, I'm going to go to over cover one. I'm not going to worry about it. So if I'm over cover one, I'll tell the safety. He go in motion. You got him. So backwards. Your gap don't change. You say you play downhill. In zone football, when you motion a guy, coverage can cause you to change your gap responsibility. And I think that happened a little bit, and that affected them somewhat. But no, I'm not changing the call. Mm. Each defense should be able to adjust whatever you have out there and go play football. Gotcha. All right, man. Uh, people want to know about that Miami game. Say, Coach Vance, if your head coach pulled what Cristobal did, how do you get the team to regroup? I told you before we came on, so man, I said you could lose a team doing what that dude just did. You, you could lose a team, but you know what I'm going to tell my team. Mario believes in the offensive line and the running back so much. We don't need to take a knee. What the University of Miami? We're going to go and play our style of football. We're going to do the little things right. Running back, you hold on to the ball with both arms. Offensive line, knock them off the ball. We're going to get a first down, run the clock out, and go home. It just so happens something bad happened right here. We've got to make sure we go back to the fundamentals for the running back. When you get engaged in a situation, put both arms on the ball. The fellas. We're not taking any. That's not who we, we are. We're going to hit people in the mouth. We're going to run downhill. I trust in you. You trust in me. And I promise you, we're not going to, we're not going to lose another game this year. That's what I want to tell my football team. Mm -hmm. All right, Vance. Uh, Antoine Johnson has a question. Vance, have you ever played against a team that rotated offensive linemen in and out? And if so, what was the effect on the defense? Uh, and if you didn't, would you? Uh, what do you think the effect would be? Uh, Harbaugh talked about rotating uh, his guys at tackle, and so you know, have you ever faced a team that rotated offensive linemen? Only if they were injured. If they were injured, I saw that. But you know, you're trying to keep guys fresh. The only people do that on defense. I haven't seen that very much on offense. That's the reason why you have your starters because they are used to working with each other. They understand how the guy next to him does things. When you bring another guy in there. The communication is going to be a little bit different. He got to get used to the snap count, working to a guy next to him. And that can cause some problems, in my opinion. But, again, I haven't been on offense. I'm just listening to what other offensive line coaches have said in the past. And I haven't been around a guy in the NFL or college that have ever done that. When the guys are injured, he didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. If my five starters are healthy, then they're going to play. you got to play 
50, uh, uh, 85 snaps, you're going to play the five snaps. That's what you're taught to do. Hey, it's like you're a mule. Mules don't get tired, baby. You just keep on going. All right. Tyler W. has a question. Vance, why are we consistently getting more turnovers this year relative to last year? More experience or something in the scheme? What do you see? Oh, the scheme is pretty much the same. I just think the experience, I think the pressure up front, the linebackers are playing, it's, it's like night and day compared to last year. I mean, they, their fits are better. Their drops are better. You're getting more guys around the ball. But, again, the front seven, that includes the linebackers, they are playing outstanding ball this year. So the quarterback's getting pressure, throwing some bad balls. We're getting more strips. So I think that's a big part of it. I think it's the front seven. This is the best overall as a group, not as an individual. We're not going back to a job bowl and, they, and Aiden Hutchinson. They were two very talented individuals. But as a group, depth-wise, I think our defensive front seven is really good. All right, get back to some more of the questions as they're coming fast and furious for you, Vance. Um, Right, Tim wants to know. He said the edge players look different when Mason is in. Why did you did you have you noticed that, Vance? Do they look different when Mason in there? You know, a lot of people feel that way, but but no. In this particular game right here, you know, Mason was there, so he got some pressure. But we got him in some pass situations where our defensive ends can play a little bit wider and go rush the passer. So you saw what they can do, how effective they are when they just go one on one. So that that's all we saw. We got him in third and long. Those guys, we just trying to lose. They go make a play. We hadn't been in those situations. A lot of times we just blitz. But in this particular ball game, we saw more coverage. I think Jesse went to the second half and said, we need to work on some coverage stuff. We're going to let our front four go do the work for us. So I want to make sure we get our coverages and the details of the game ready for the future. So that's why you saw more four-man rush and guys getting home. That's all it was. And the ground was in there. He, he had a couple sacks himself. I mean, but it didn't really affect the outside guys whatsoever, in my opinion. All right, back to the questions. All right, so um, did Mikey play any corner? I mean, yes, so how do, yeah. So how do we feel about Mikey at, at corner instead of nickel this week? What did you What did you think, man? I, I think it's good. He's been playing some corner in other games. Mm -hmm. He's been out there. Anytime you get uh, twelve personnel, that type of situation, he goes and plays corner. So I think it, it's good for him to do that. And at the same time, he's playing in a nickel package. Sometimes he plays corner. They did another nickel play. So they're getting some depth there, which long-term wise for the conference, it's going to benefit everybody. It makes them a better football player. It makes a team better when you can get some depth as a nickel back from another guy. So I like what he's doing right now, what Jesse's doing with those guys. All right. Getting back to it, Vance. Uh, it's a Tobias Lewis said, Vance, I'm always hearing talk about an SEC front seven. How do you think our front seven matches up against an SEC front seven? You, you know what? This year, as a as depth and as a group, and what we're doing scheme-wise, the matches are pretty good. I, I think it's a good match for it right now. When you talk about SEC, and I was there for two years, they had, you look at Alabama, we played Alabama, LSU, and Georgia. Their front had a lot of first and second round picks. They went on to the NFL and had pretty solid careers. You know, I think, you know, look at what we've done the last couple of years here at Michigan on the hardball. He's starting to have first, second, third round picks in the, in the front. I think this year, depth wise, I think you've got some potential early round picks in that front. So, yeah, we match up pretty good with whatever in the SEC. Gotcha. All right. Uh, moving on to more questions. Here's one, Vance, from Eric Martin. Vance, who do you see as a true threat? He kind of said the Suck Eyes or PSU. I guess who would you see as the bigger threat, Mike? Because both of them are threats. Who's the both bigger them, threat, Ohio State or Penn State? Both of them are threats. I mean, I think either one of those teams have a talent to beat you. Uh, when I look at Ohio State, they are still trying to figure out who they are offensively with their quarterback. They're trying to run the ball more because they're trying to take the ball out of the quarterback's hands. But this past week, you saw their receiver. I mean, he, he lit him up like a Christmas tree. He's back and healthy. Penn State, the key for them is their quarterback on how well he plays. He's the key to everything that they do. I mean, so both teams, they can give us a mission. And the key for us is that in those situations where we got to play bad pass defense in the full quarter, can we hold up? And I think that's why we saw more coverage from Jesse in this particular ball game to make sure 
the guys understand how to play fast defense without having to rush five or six all the time. All right, Vance. All right, so as you look over this team, Nuber wants to know, is the secondary the biggest concern for the defense right now, or is there another area that needs to be addressed, or is it situational? You keep talking about formation to the to the boundary as a situational thing. What would you kind of point to, Vance? I don't have any concerns when you put it that way. I, I really don't. I think there have been little glitches here and there. And each week, the next week, those glitches are gone. I mean, so we continue to take away, take out things that have caused some problems for us. People are going to continue to test us for formation to boundary by motion. And I say this all the time. Not just lining up in it. Somehow you motion to it, a motion out of it, it makes players think. When you can make them think in their zone football team, now it helps you in the run game more. So I, I see us getting, doing that more in practice, preparing for that. But Penn State, they're not a motion team. Ohio State, they're not a motion team. Now, they might start trying to do that, but that also changes what they do as far as play call. Minnesota's been doing that the whole year. So that's what they do. So, no, I just I see some little glitches here and there, but concerns, I don't have any concerns. Yet. All right, Vance, here's another one. Travis wants to know, Travis Foster says, how do you feel about Mike Barrett's play so far? He looks really good to me. What would you say about Mike Barrett? And I know Mike Barrett Sr. is checking it out, Vance. As he said, he goes to school every week in Vance's <laughs> film study. So what do you think about his, his baby? What do you think about Mike Barrett Jr.? He's taking a huge step this year. If I go back and look at, last, look at last year's video, sometimes he looked confused. His run fits were not very good. This year, I don't see that. I see a guy who's playing smart, fast, and aggressive. So that means he's understanding what he has to do. And I think it goes back to his linebacker coach. I think things are being explained to him better, where he should fit, how the defense is. I think he's, he's the lead on the defense right now. So, no, he, he's taking a huge step. And I expect to continue to see that. And I expect for him to make a lot more plays these next two ball games. Adam Stevenson's back. He got a lot of questions this week. Adam says, do you like uh, stunts, twists, or would you for, or would you prefer to see more one-on-one -on -one pass rushing for Michigan's D-line? I know the answer to this, but what do you think, well, man? I, man? I'm going to stunt, twist. I'm trying to confuse the offensive line. If I got a great pass rusher like Aiden Hutchinson, I'm going to have you out there by yourself, but the rest of you guys, I'm going to twist and stunt. If I got a great three technique, okay, a guy inside, I was a Texas with Malcolm Brown with the first round pick by the Patriots. A lot of times, hey, but these guys got some stunts. You're on your own. You'll beat that guy. You got a two way go. So, based on a talent, football is about this. It's about matchups. I'm looking to get my best player on your weakest guy. If that's the case, I'm going to tell you, it was a long time ago, I'm in Oklahoma State with a guy named Jason Gilder, second round pick by the Pittsburgh Steelers, played about eight years in the league. He's a defensive end. And third down, we either played him at nose or three technique. You know why? They were the weakest block. We said, you got a two-way goal. Just go beat him. Guess what he did a lot? Where did you beat that guy? So when I got a special guy, I leave him alone. But the other guys, I'm twisting guys. I'm blitzing. I'm finding different ways to confuse the offensive line and to confuse the quarterback. All right, Vance. Uh, getting back to uh, some more of the questions. I'll get to one that we kind of got to in the, in the film study. I think it applies here as well because we're at the halfway point. So – Look at – assess the first half of the season and kind of give me what you are coaching the team on. What do you, It kind of fits into a question that one of the viewers asked, like, you know, what do you what do you feel like you need to improve on? What would you be addressing? Like, fellas, we got to work on this for the second half of the season. What would the biggest things be? Biggest things is, first of all, make sure I run fits as proper. Just do your job. I'm not looking for anybody in this room to make a great play. I'm looking for you to make the plays that come your way. And I'm talking about the front. We had some issues in some early ball games where guys jumping out of their gaps trying to make a play. That's not your job. If you do your job to the best of your ability and get your job done, then we're going to be successful. In the past game, understanding how people can attack us based on the defense we're in. Okay, what are the strengths of the defense? If I'm playing cornerback right now, where's my help at based on the coverage? It's like the first interception for a touchdown. They playing palms out there. That's great teaching, and they took the teaching to the field. We need to see more of that every single ball game. Okay, So when I look at that, my assessment is that so far it's been really good. 
each ball game, we've gotten better and better. We've made some mistakes of some minor uh, miscues in the game before. The next ball game, the next ball game, the next ball game, it doesn't show up again. And to me, you're stepping in the right direction. So just keep doing what you're doing. Take care of the details of the game and the rest of it, athletic ability. Come Ohio State weekend, we're going to be undefeated in Big Ten champions for the third year in a row. Compare, I mean, you know, I know where Ohio State is right now. You think they have the potential to, by the end of the season, be as good as they were last year? Like, you you watched Ohio State, you watched them against Maryland. What do you think of they don't have, What's the ceiling for that team? They don't have C.J. Stroud. Look what C.J. Stroud doing in the league. Everybody, well, he can't think. Uh, he made an eight on some kind of dumb test. He's the best rookie quarterback up there right now. C.J. Stroud was – they don't have a C.J. Stroud. Not many teams in college football today have a, a Stroud. He was, I think he was a special player. So it's a different Ohio State football team. That's why he's trying to run the ball more. And he's trying to do more plaques and pass, trying to protect the quarterback. So you're going to see a different football team. You're going to see probably a more physical team than what they have been. But I don't know if it's going to be as good of a team because of what they did. They don't score as fast anymore. They're taking the time off the clock. They're protecting their defense. and playing better defense because of it. Last year, they might score on one play. So their defense kind of wore out as the season went on. This year, I don't see that. They're, taking, they, they're looking like an old Big Ten team on the urban, different kind of offense, we're going to run the ball, play action pass, shorten the game, keep our defense fresh and win with defense. And so uh, one, of your for, one of your former bosses, Urban, he was real, real critical of Michigan's schedule, right? He's, he was like, hey, you know, Michigan doesn't play anybody. That's why, uh, that's why Nebraska's going to give them a game, so on and so forth, right? He was wrong, right? Then Nebraska didn't give him a game. I, I continue to think that Urban had, you know, he had some, I don't know what it was. It, certainly he wasn't sober, in my opinion. I can't make, I can't say that for sure. He just seemed that way to me. But, Vance, Newber wants to know, do you have any thoughts on the criticism towards Michigan's schedule? What do you think of the people who say Michigan's schedule is too soft? No, no, when you had a big-time program, your schedule was made 10 to 15 years ahead of time. And when I look at what Michigan has done so far this year, when you are just better than other people, go out and dominate people that way. Guess what Michigan has done in every ball game? They have physically dominated every single ball game. A lot of programs play down to the level of a lesser team. They don't get better. Michigan hasn't done that. They play up to the level of who Michigan is. So they continue to keep climbing that ladder of success. So when people make comments, well, they hadn't played anybody, but well, they went in uh, 30 to 28, that's a concern. They went in 52 to 10. That's not a concern. They are playing 60 minutes of hard-nosed balls out football. They're not worried about the team in a different color uniform. They're concerned about the University of Michigan and how they play, and that's how you have success. Great teams, they only worry about who they are. They don't care about the people across the field from them. When you start worrying about them, that's when you get in trouble. So right now, I, I don't see issues with that at all. I really don't. Yeah, man. Yeah, it is uh, definitely looking good for the Maize and Blue. Looking more like the top team uh, in the country. Late claim. I mean, you see some some squads out there struggling. Georgia was having a tough time. You see your old Louisville Cardinals beat Notre Dame, Ooh, man? Boy, they on the train down there, baby. <laughs> hey, hey they, they still got my speech and a loudspeaker down there. I'm talking about get on the train. Man, they playing some ball, Doug. I mean, my man Ron Ingram's to DC. They balling out down there. I mean, that place, they got them right now. Hey, they hanging from the rafters in Louisville right now. I am so happy for those guys. Hey, hey, when my Longhorns, they they lost. I was down. I said, man, I, I need my, my Wolverines and my Cardinals to pick me up. Man, you guys made my night. I got over, man. I really did. I had my family over at the house, my, my sisters, my nephews, and they brought me some dinner. Man, I like. I was broken hearted until you guys played Louisville play. So what happened to Texas, Vance? What happened? They big, fat, and came first and goal on the two-yard line with the biggest offensive line in the country, and they can't get two yards. That's what happened to them. That's what happened to them. Hey, I'm not an offensive guy. Okay. First of all, I'm just going to wedge block like a quarterback sneak, 
I got two fat defensive linemen in the backfield, block off the edge, and give it to the back and go right over the top. But you know what? They, they didn't do that. They blocked it like a base play, so the dog on tackle turned out, and a linebacker ran through this in the backfield. Not once but twice. That's what happened. You get too cute. You that big, man, get down there and get wedged back, knock these guys off the ball, back right over the top. Let's get in the end zone. Then on fourth down, you already said it. This fourth down call should be the third down call. But all I've got to say is, my offensive line that big, and that can't move guys off the ball on the two-yard line, I'm looking at my offensive line. That's where the game was lost with the offensive line. Just my humble opinion as a former football player at the University of Texas. Not as a football coach, as a former alumnus who's still kind of upset about that game. <laughs> so is how good is Oklahoma? I mean, they, they won the game. What do you think of the Sooners? I said Texas is going to win by 17 points. That's how I felt going to that ball game. And, and, and they sit back, well, we didn't play our best game, but they did. I don't buy all that kind of mess. It's a big game. You play your best game all the time. And I play University of Texas. Fred Texas to say, everybody's going to give us <clears throat> the A game. Everybody, because why? You Texas at Michigan, you're going to get the people A game. Lloyd Carter, the same thing. If you show up in your C game and they're in an the A game, you can lose. Texas showed up for some reason. Why are you not fired up playing against Oklahoma? I would have played in that game and coached in that game. When you walk out there, one side is red, and one side is on. You can't beat that. That, that. That's different. That's different. And we always, and going to the tunnel, we used to go fight every time. Every time I was there, we had to fight. You're going through the same tunnel. You couldn't help but fight them guys because you knew some of them because I have Oklahoma's team from Texas. But no, in, in my opinion, they choked. I'm just going to be honest. I, I, that's just how I got to say it. They choked. First and goal on the two-yard line and four tries, you can't get in. Everybody, well, they turn the ball over twice. No, first and goal on the two was the game. You control the game, you score. But that was Michigan. First and goal on the two, not a doubt in my mind, they're going to get in the end zone with that offensive line you got because Sharon Moore is the offensive line coach. If Sharon Moore was the offensive line coach to Texas, Texas would have won that ball game. I don't know the offensive line coach. I'm not trying to throw shots at him. I'm just saying. Jerome Moore first, at the University of Texas, first and goal in the two. Texas just beat Oklahoma in the Red River shootout. My honest opinion. But it don't mean a whole lot. That's why I don't have to be politically correct. I'm going to Austin tomorrow, and I don't care if I make people mad. Why? You know why, Sam? They don't pay me nothing. <laughs> Think about it. I went to the University of Texas. I'm doing a Michigan Insider. Boy, it's a beautiful thing. Huh? Huh, Sam? Hey, it's a beautiful thing. I can't, hey, Sam. I can't buy a ticket at my own album model. They sold out. What do you think like, about that? They not gonna put you on the in the box on the sideline, something. They sold man, out, man. You That's played there, own, coached there, man. So I played you? there, left a knee there, graduated from there, came back and coached. And we were awful when I coached there, no sense lying about that. I came buy a ticket. Now if my a bunch of my teammates came out and said, Vance, you want to go? We'll we get a ticket for you. I said, no, nah, no, nah, I just you know, you're an alumnus of Texas as a football player. You promised a ticket. They, they, hey, they stole my ticket. What do you think about that? Man. All right, see, that's why you need to fund the film. So we got to get, now we got to get Vance a ticket to the games. We got to feed Tiki. We got to get some Buffalo steaks. Right? We got to get Maggie on vacation. And we got to get Vance a ticket to a Texas game. That's okay. I don't need to go to that game. I don't need to go. I don't need to go. I'm good. I hear that. Hey, well, we, we need to get you when Michigan goes to the Big Ten championship game, when they go to the playoff game, you know, when they go to the national championship game. We got to get you to one, one, two, three, all of them. Man, I'd, love, I'd love to be that. I'd love to be one of those games, man. I'd yeah. be thrilled to death. I'd be like Fred Jackson, my boy Fred. I'd be walking by. I'd be watching the game. My wife, Maggie, and I'd be watching the game. That'd be Fred. He'd be standing right behind Hardball. Boy, he'd be getting some peak, get some prime time. Boy, that's my man, Freddie J. Straight out of Louisiana, man. <laughs> Freddie J looked like it's 1995. Still. <laughs> hey, he hadn't changed a bit. He just got a great beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, folks, another one in the books. We got most of your questions in there. I want to make sure Vance gets to He got some other things to tend to tonight, so I want to make sure he can get there. Uh, appreciate you joining us for another Michigan football breakdown. We do this every week. And we're going to see. See, Vance was a little fired up this week. He was a little fired up this week. We're going to see if we come back next weekend 
and see if there's any more fire up, anything else to fire Vance up in the game against Indiana. We'll see, right? Indiana. <laughs> You know, I try to set the stage and let, let people know you ain't you're not talking about against Minnesota. You're talking about how does this work against Ohio State? How does it work against Penn State? You sound like Urban Meyer, okay? <laughs> you sound like Urban Meyer. Indiana stinks, okay. <laughs> hey, I know I'll make people mad, but that's my job to make them mad. 48 to 10. Okay, that's the score. Indiana's terrible. And they can't fire the coach. They can't his, buyout, his, his buyout is too big, man. I they mean, that's did. how it works these days. You know what Michigan's doing right now? Michigan is playing against Michigan. They're in their own heads right now. When you're a great football team, you're not playing against the opponent. You're playing against yourselves right now. As long as Michigan players understand that, the rest of it doesn't matter. It's not the opponent across the state. You're in your own head. I'm doing my job. The guy in front of me, I'm supposed to block him and knock him back two yards. That's what I'm going to do. That's what it is. So we're not playing Indiana. We're playing Michigan. Indiana just happened to be in the way of a freight train going downhill on ice. It can't stop. Sam, it's a freight train going downhill on ice. There's no way you can stop. They happen to get in the way. It can't get out of the way, Sam. It's roadkill. It's just roadkill. That's all it is. Uh, folks, I hope you had a good time. It's always a good time with Vance, right? Uh, if you like uh, hanging out with Vance, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll keep it going and growing. We'll see you again next week on the next edition of the Michigan Football Breakdown, focused on the defense with Vance Beth. Go Blue!